mass, you've heard about it, is essentially a property of a, any physical body. It determines the strength of its manual, mutual gravitational attraction between bodies. So if you have, for example, this mass right here and this mass right here, they will attract each other just because they have mass. Uh, it's also a resistance to being accelerated. So for example, if you have a huge mass and a small mass, well, of course, you expect this one to be accelerated very easily compared to the big one here. And actually, this is kind of crazy, we, but it also helps. It is the relation between mass and energy. So you can actually say the more mass you have, the more energy you have, speaking in the theory of relativity context. Now, what type of units do we use? We use the kilogram, kg, for the system or international system. In the English system we have the pound, which is LP. Now mole, what's mole? Mole is actually a unit of measurement of any amount of substance. So this is, I love to explain this, this is actually to say like a dozen, we have a dozen of eyes, you know it's 12, or a pair, when you say pair, you know it's two. When you see a trio, we have three. When we say, for example, a six pack, we know if it's six, and so on. But in chemistry, these dudes come into this number, the Avogadro number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23, which is a very huge zero. Imagine this along 23 zeros, it's a lot. That's the number of atoms present in one mole. So, why do we choose this? Because, for example, one mole of, let's say, hydrogen gas is about 2 grams. And what do we have in these 2 grams? We have actually 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of hydrogen in that 2 grams, which is awesome. Now, how do we relate mass and weight? Uh, sorry, mass and moles. So we have mass, which is kilograms or grams, and we have moles which can be either kilomole or gram mole. The only way to relate this is essentially to know what substance is we're talking about and to know the molecular mass or molecular weight. These are used interchangeably, which I don't think is good because mass and weight is not the same, but in chemistry we can say or we use it very commonly. It's the mass of a molecule. So, for example, or of a mole of a molecule. For example, if we have the molecular mass of one mole of carbon, by definition, is 12 grams. That's the molecular weight. So, you were to answer the question in which they ask you in 36 grams of carbon, how many moles do you have? Since you have 12 grams, one mole, then 36 divided by 12 should give you. 3 moles, so we have 3 moles of carbon in those 36 grams. Okay, so that was the relationship between mass, weight and mole. Probably you know it. We are going to use it essentially when we do ideal gas law examples. For example, PV equals NRT. Or many times you can get the density, but you get it as a molar density, moles per cubic meter, and you don't like moles, we want to work with kilograms. So how do we change that? We change that with molecular mass. I'll see you in the next video. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you are for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.